Welcome back. Today I'd like to talk to you a little bit about the calculus of vector valued functions. And so today let's start with uh, derivatives. So we understand now what a vector valued function is. Typically a vector valued function looks something like r of t is equal to something like f of t times i plus g of t times j plus h of t times k. So a derivative in three dimensions is uh, really just like a derivative in two dimensions except in this case the independent variable is t it's not x as we're used to so we could talk about the derivative of r with respect to t. If you like, you could call that dr dt. But the derivative of something with respect to t uh, really is, if we wanted to think about it as a limit, this is going to be the limit as um, delta t goes to 0 of r of t plus delta t minus r of t divided by delta t. Now of course when we're using two dimensions instead of saying delta t goes to zero we would say something like h goes to zero. Uh, it, it's really just the same thing. Delta t is a variable that is going to zero and so everything is really the same. But uh, if we were to work this all out, what we find is that this really basically boils down to taking the derivative of f with respect to t in the i direction plus the derivative of g with respect to t in the j direction plus the derivative of h with respect to t in the k direction. So in other words, if I want to take the derivative of this vector valued function r of t, I just want to take the derivative of each component separately. So it boils down to, I'm really just taking three derivatives, one for the x direction, one for the y direction, one for the z direction. Okay, uh, And if I wanted to do a quick example just to show how this works, um, Let's say if r of t is equal to, let's say, t cubed i minus t squared j plus sine of t k, then uh, find r prime of t. Okay, so really to find r prime of t, I just want to take the derivative of each component. So I look at the first component of r of t and I see that it is t cubed. So I take the derivative of t cubed and I get 3t squared and that's times i. Then I look at the second component, the y direction, and I get negative t squared, and the derivative of negative t squared, of course, is minus 2t times j. And then I look at the third component, and I have a sine of t. The derivative of sine is cosine of t, so I get cosine of t k. and I have the derivative of that vector valued function. So taking derivatives of vector valued functions really is fairly straightforward. You just need to take the derivative of each component individually. All right, uh, let me write down a definition. The vector function R is differentiable if 
it is differentiable at each point in its domain. Okay, so we just talked about differentiability, but in particular we're talking about differentiability at a given point t. What does it mean for the entire function to be differentiable? It means that in every, at every point in its domain it is differentiable. Okay, so then we say it's a differentiable function r. Uh, another definition is <clears throat> Um, the curve traced by this vector valued function r is smooth if dr dt um, is continuous and never the zero vector. Okay, so we call a curve smooth if we are, it's a nice continuous function and we never get the zero vector. Okay, um, one more definition r prime of t is the vector tangent to the curve at t. Okay. So in other words, we're used to tangent lines, and now we can kind of talk about a tangent vector at t. In other words, if we have this function uh, in three dimensions, so let's say I just have a function in three dimensions, and I pick a point on there, t0, okay, uh, so this is basically r of t0. I have a point. Then if I want to talk about r prime at t0, then, and remember r of t0, if I have an origin down here, like let's say this is the origin, and I have my x, y, and z axis down here, this is the origin, then r of t0 could be thought of as the vector that points at the point r of t0 also. Both of those are good ways to think about a vector value function at t0. So r of t0 is this point. It's also this vector, okay? But if I wanna talk about r prime of t0, then we can think about there's a vector that's tangent to the curve at this point, and this vector is r prime of t0, that is the vector that's tangent. Now, when I describe that vector, is that vector necessarily uh, located at that starting point r of t0, this point? Does that vector start there? Not necessarily if I have it in component form. In component form, that vector might be setting down at the origin. So it might be down here. But remember, this vector and the vector up here, they're the same vector, they're, the vector is just moved. So if it's in component form, it's going to be uh, starting at the origin, but if I wanted it to start up here, I would just need to translate it up there. So just keep that in mind, that this vector here and this vector here, those are the same vector r prime of t0. Okay, so we can talk about
tangent vectors. Okay. Um, now, uh, I also want to talk for a second about taking the integral of vector valued functions. All right, so let's start with, uh, really there are two types of integrals. There are indefinite integrals and there are definite integrals. Both of them are semi-similar. Let's start with uh, indefinite integrals. So for an indefinite integral, we can talk about the integral of r of t dt and this is just going to be equal to capital R of t plus our constant of integration c where capital R of t is an antiderivative of little r of t. And as just as we did for derivatives, we're going to take antiderivatives of vector valued functions component wise. In other words, the integral of little r of t dt could be written as the integral of f of t dt in the i direction plus the integral of g of t dt in the j direction plus the integral of h of t dt in the k direction. All right, so if you take each of these component integrals, you get the indefinite integral of a vector valued function. So just like taking the derivative of a vector valued function, taking the antiderivative of a vector valued function is not hard. You're basically just taking three integrals instead of one. So in some sense, if you know how to do your calculus one, you already know how to do these integrals. You're just doing three integrals instead of one. Uh, very similar for definite integrals. Uh, let me show you. So definition, uh, a definite integral. Uh, let's say we have the integral from a to b of r of t dt then that's just going to be exactly what you would think. Uh, it's the same as taking the integral from a to b of f of t dt times i plus the integral from a to b of g of t dt j plus the integral from a to b of h of t dt k. And that is how we would compute a definite integral for a vector valued function. Okay, maybe let's do one quick example just so you can see what's going on and then we will uh, let you practice some of these. All right, so let's say example, let's let this vector valued function r of t be equal to, uh, let's say, Um, t squared i plus t j minus let's say uh, 3 um, sine of t k. Uh, now let's say we want to find the indefinite integral of r of t dt. All right. So if I want the integral 
of r of t dt oops uh, that's going to equal the integral of t squared dt times i plus the integral of t dt j plus the integral of negative 3 sine t dt k. But the integral of t squared dt is t cubed over 3 i okay, plus um, the antiderivative of t is t squared over 2 j and then the antiderivative of negative 3 sine of t would be plus 3 cosine of t k um, plus a constant correct um, so what do we mean by a constant well a constant could be a constant vector right not necessarily a constant like the number three so saying plus three here uh, doesn't make a lot of sense it's like well three in what direction well really it's in any direction because um, so I could say plus C where I suppose C could be a vector okay uh, with some values in the i, j, and k position. So I could add any constant I want to and so that's how I'll write on my constant of integration. I'm not going to put a c inside of each of the i, j, and k component. Um, I'll just write a c vector out to the side and call it a day. Alright, so that should give you what you need to do a little bit of calculus using vector valued functions. So Basically, what we've learned is that taking derivatives and antiderivatives of vector value functions basically boils down to just doing what we know from calculus one three times if you're working in three dimensions. So you should be good to go for some homework.